Although I could have been doing more. I was just hurt and traumatized. Disgusted. I want some of y'all for Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel, this is Bound Share Commentary, and I am your girl, Kayla. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe for more content on black entertainment, black womanhood, and whatever the heck I feel like talking about this week. Alright, let's get right in to it. So, I want us to continue the conversation that I started with the colorism on the Proud Family um, video I did a couple of weeks ago, and kind of just talk about the overall negative treatment or overall colorism that persists on Disney Channel as a network. Um, because let's be honest, when it comes to black girls on Disney Channel, um, there are very few seats at the table for black girls, period. Um, but also, they're also, when there are black girls that get the seat, it's a certain look that they have to have. And most of the time, girls that look like me, girls that look even a shade darker than I do, um, they don't get to have a seat. They don't get to have everything that a Hannah Montana or a Wizards of Wave Replace or even um, a Sunny with a Chance or any of those shows get to have. Um, so let's get right into it. And I, I want to say that I... I'm all here for people like a Raven or Zendaya or Tia and Tamara all for having their shows and getting their shine. They deserve it. It is as they are well deserved. And I had a blast watching those shows growing up. What I am saying is, as I was talking about my Netflix conversation, the very first video I ever did, is that why is there never enough seats for both? Why can't there ever be multiple forms of black girl representation? That is where the problem lies because like I said, so often it is just a biracial girl or just a light-skinned girl that gets to be the main character and the star while the dark-skinned girl gets to be the bully or the girl on the side or a best friend that barely gets any camera time or pretty much non-existent. And so I want to be clear on why I had this conversation in the first place because like I said, I am all here for proper and, you know, proper representation of darker skin girls because we deserve to see it because especially the girls of today um and furthermore i also want to say i am fully aware of the star that is china and mclean because i know people are going to say well she had a good little run right however to me personally i don't think i would consider china and mclean a darker skin girl i would say she's more on the brown side of the brown skin side um of the spectrum just you know thinking in comparison to her sister um nessie she's a little bit lighter than her as well as someone of the girls that i'm going to mention like kiki palmer or coco jones she's a little bit lighter than them i also do think that she the treatment of her um, compared to some other Disney Channel girls is a bit different and I do think her complexion plays into that because she's darker than them but like I said in the context of this conversation I'm talking about deep complexion dark skin girls I talk about the earlier girls um, and how they're treated on Disney Channel Then we're gonna get into some modern day girls and then we're gonna talk about the future kind of and where should Disney go from here so first things first we're gonna talk about Trina McGee if you don't know Trina McGee she played Angela Moore on the hit night 90s 2000s abc family slash disney channel show i guess um boy meets world right she was um topanga's friend as well as sean's love interest for many a season and i think she even reprised her role on the um spinoff show girl meets world um and so she was the only <laughs> um main black cast member at the time and um and she kind of talked about her treatment and her how she felt like as being the only black cast member on a, predomin on a predominantly white show. And I feel like it's a great starting point to talk about this conversation. So listen to this. During an interview with Yahoo Entertainment published Thursday, McGee said she couldn't shake the hurt of some of the words and situations that were said. McGee was the only black main cast member on the popular sitcom. I feel like I'm always the one who did it who had to squelch it and move on. You could get sued, you could get fired, you could ruin this person's career. McGee said, what about me? What about all this stuff I'm taking and ingesting in me and not totally realizing how much it's lowering my vibration, my self-esteem? 
McGee first revealed on Twitter in January that co-star Will Fredo, who played Eric Matthews, called her Aunt Jemima while she was getting her hair and makeup done on set. She was on the receiving end of other racially insensitive comments over the years while working on the show. I don't think that Will at the time really understood the depth of that. He's not a black woman, McGee said Thursday. I didn't have a hairdresser on the set of Boy Meets World. All those little micro braids you see, I stayed up all night doing them right before I went on national television for myself. And child, what a way to start, honey. Um, but, you know, it's really just unfortunate that a multi-million dollar corporation like a Dis Disney could not afford or chooses not to pay, you know, a stylist that knows how to do black hair, a.k.a. a black hair stylist. You cannot tell me that y'all are in California and there are not billions and billions of black hairstylists that are more than capable than doing this young girl's hair. There's no reason why she had to be sitting there doing micro braids. Do you know how long braids take when another person is doing it? Now, just imagine, like, you, you have to do it yourself and you know you have the pressure that you're gonna be on tv so you want it to look extra good you can't even like yeah make sure the parts is nice and neat you gotta make sure it look presentable that is quite ridiculous and you know what's crazy is that despite you know boy meets world going on how many years ago this is something i still hear young black girls um and as well as girls on other networks i think the girl that's on the um the new version of Sabrina, the Teenage Witch on Netflix, also talked about the fact that she has to do her own hair. Um, but someone as recent as Sky Jackson has also came out and said that she had to, she struggled to get a good hairstylist for her. So the fact that a girl that was in a show as recent as a couple of years ago, still they could not find a good hairstylist. But I bet you Danielle Fisher's hair was on point. I never seen Topanga's hair out of place. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason that this young girl had to go through that and then to take it a step further the fact that she you know kept feeling isolated on set that's also a problem because it's not enough to just have a, have a black actress on your show you need to make sure that character you need to make sure that actress is feeling welcome feeling included in everything like and that's how you know a lot of these shows is just tokenism because behind the scenes you never know how a lot of these kids are struggling at a pivotal moment in their lives because a lot of these people are just kids they are like you know 12 13 and even younger than that and so that's already just disheartening to learn. But like I said, the treatment of Trina is just a great starting point because like I said, it shows you that not only did Angela basically get little to no storylines on that show, but also behind the scenes, she was being treated like trash. Okay, moving right along. So the next person I wanna talk about is Miss Kiki Palmer. And I mean, Kiki Palmer, I bring or I bring up Kiki Palmer because she recently um, showed on her Instagram that she was supposed to have a show on Disney Channel called Jamal and Me, I believe, and you know the the pilot never got picked up. And I mean, pilots don't get picked up all the time. There are plenty of people who shoot. They you know millions of pilots get you know um, pitched and things like that to very big networks and never ever and they never see the light of day. But I feel like it's very interesting that Kiki Palmer in particular show did not get picked up because it looked like a typical Disney Channel show at that for that time period. And I do think that colorism plays a part into why the show never saw the light of day. Um, because I think that they probably thought she was not marketable enough. And I don't know why, because this is Kiki Palmer who just, you know, was probably fresh off the set or a couple years shy from Akilah and the Bee, as well as, you know, Medea's family reunion, if you want to count. I mean, she did a good job in that movie. I already know how I feel about Sal at this point, um, but you know what I mean. Um, and so, and I mean, look at Kiki, even to this day, she has a great personality. She can hold her own. She has, there was no reason that this show didn't get picked up. But like I said, I can see why, because she, they probably did not think she had the look to sell this show. They didn't think the show was going to do well in ratings, but I find it interesting because a couple of years later, 
um, she was in the hit Disney Channel original movie called Jump In. And who does not remember Jump In? Like, that was a time. And that soundtrack slapped severely. Like, come on now. Uh, what's funny about Jump In is that it was one of Disney Channel's most successful original movies. Um, Jump In broke the record previously set by the Cheetah Girls 2 as the highest decom premiere with 8.2 million viewers at the time it marks corbin blue's second number one hit for the disney channel and kiki palmer's first it's and so here's the thing so like i've been saying when it comes to certain movies is that when you put black people at the forefront it always sells like it always sells there's very few times where there are movies with black people in it and we don't get nothing right um and so it's not shocking that jump in did well but like i said i do think and it's shocking that disney channel did not really <laughs> that disney channel did not offer kiki a show now granted this was about a year before true jackson bp so she might have always might have already gotten you know the green light from nickelodeon or maybe the offer from nickelodeon so she could not do a show with disney channel but i feel like even if she did it, it's like, why does she have to prove that she can make, hold her own in a movie if you gotta give her a show anyway? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that the fact that she was able to come back and show them, like, look what you missed out on is so wonderful. Like, get your Disney coin, Kiki. Because one thing about Kiki promise, she don't get that coin, honey. Okay? Moving right along, we're gonna talk about probably the most saddest story of these women. Um, and that is Coco Jones. Because Coco, Coco. I remember when Coco was on that little like talent show, whatever I think it's called Disney Channel's Next Big Thing, and she came up on that thing talking about my name is Coco and I'm a singer. Like I will never, I can't sing like the damn, but you get the point. She was so cute, and I love the fact that I saw a dark skin girl on my screen because, like I said, we are like unicorns out here. So, um. It was just refreshing to see that and I was so excited to see what they were going to do with her because Disney Channel is a star making machine. When you're on Disney Channel, you practically made it as a child star. Deals, television deals and a music deal. And furthermore, you're kind of just everywhere. Brand deals. Like and you get like kind of catapulted into stardom. And of course, not every Disney Channel star has this story, but a lot of them do because look at the people that we grew up with seeing. They're still relevant. Like, so this is definitely definitely a good move for you and so for Coco Coco deserved all of that but she didn't get that but what she did get was a movie let it shine and once again <laughs> that is one of the best Disney Channel original movies hands down and once again soundtrack slaps um but the premiere of let it shine garnered 5.7 million viewers the high cable rating of the day and obtained an adult 18 through 49 rating of 0 0.9 seconds only family guy it was the most watched disney channel original movie to that point of 2012 and the number one movie of that year across kids 6 to 11 tweens and teens so once again <laughs> we can make and sell good movies and coco like i said with kiki should have been catapulted into superstardom and so you know i remember a couple of months ago how this whole thing we learned about coco now was because someone on twitter as most conversations go you know was like yo whatever happened to coco jones we failed her and like i always say we didn't do nothing it is all on disney channel for this one disney channel disney you know whatever and Disney Channel did the girl dirty, okay? And then, you know, because, you know, people were researching and finding out, it finally got back to her, and she made a, you know, a video on YouTube basically revealing everything that happened. And, I mean, what a masterpiece that video is. Like, the fact that memes came out of it, the whole, and you would do it too for a check thing, and I was hurt and traumatized, disgusted. Like, this girl, once again, much like Kiki, has a great person, made for television, made to be seen by millions of people, just a superstar. Even, like, I always think about her cover of, um, I think it's, what's the song? 
um, hit different. Like, I can never hear that song, like, the same anymore because of her little covers. This girl is talented. She is gorgeous. She is all that in a bag of chips. And Disney Channel did not see it fit. I mean, to give her her things. And that is so unfortunate because what a bag they missed. What a bag they missed. Um, because, and when you watch that video, she reveals exactly how they just couldn't find a place for her and then when she would go to interview or she would go on um auditions you know she would see other types of girls and already know they're gonna get the job or they would try to offer her some foolishness probably some stereotype or caricature of a black woman she probably wasn't going for that and good on her for that all money ain't good money okay um so you know, and because they struggled to find her something, not a record deal, nor a acting job, they basically let her go and she was just into the void until now. Um, and I'm so happy that, you know, somebody had that, you know, that, that um, someone was curious to find out what happened to her because I wanted to know too, okay? Um, but yeah, like, it is just unfortunate that Coco had to go through that because it shouldn't have been that way. Like I said, we have seen time and time again how Disney Channel births these stars. Stars that we see on TV still. We still see, you know, Zendaya. We still see Tia and Tamara. We still see Raven. We still see um who else dylan and cole sprouse even okay like these people are still acting or they have music careers or whatever it is and girls deserved better that's my point they deserved better there's no reason why these girls got treated the way they did as well as why have there not been a dark skin female lead in a television show to this day like literally to this day um it's really just annoying because I said I was a girl who loved me some Disney Channel. I watched it very frequently. I was always tuned in and glued into every movie, movie premiere and things like that. Um, but I said when it came to girls that looked like me, they were few and far between. Um, and Disney Channel does have a look when it comes to television shows. When you think uh, sister, sister, you think that's so Raven, even the Proud family, um, Casey Undercover, Ant Farm, um, what's the other one? Shake It Up, I guess, could be in the conversation, and that's so Raven, you know, you look at all these women and they're on the lighter end of the spectrum. And like I said, that doesn't mean those girls did not deserve their shows. They all did the damn thing. All very talented, capable women. And even for black girls at a, as a whole, as I think about it, these black girls had to prove themselves. Most of them were established child actresses before Disney Channel gave them anything. While on the other hand of it, most of the other white girls that have been on this, you know, on the network were literal nobodies. People we didn't know from nowhere. Or they were related to some celebrity or something like that, like Hannah Montana. And I'm not saying Miley Cyrus was her for things. She's a very talented girl. It's not like she, was, she wasn't talented. But what I'm saying is part of the reason why she got put in the place that she did was because she was Billy Ray Cyrus's daughter. Let's just call it a thing. Um, and so that just brings me to the point, right? Like I said, we, I just wish that Disney Channel did these girls better. And it's the fact that it's 2021 and there's still not a darker skinned girl on my television screen. However, we might have hope. We might have hope because the good sis Marseille Martin is um there's been it's been rumored that she is getting a or a pilot got greenlit i believed um by disney channel for a new comedy show called saturdays um it's about these black girls that are roller skating and let me tell you something there's not one not two but three darker skin girls as leads i could just and a dark skin mama and a dark skin mama okay and i could just I'm just so proud of that girl. Like, I don't know Marseille from nobody, but that is a gun girl that is going places. And I'm so proud of her. Because it's the way she doing better than her boss, Kenya Burr. It's the way she doing better because he is the paper bag police. <laughs> Debate with the wall. I don't make the rules, okay? 
Um, but the fact that she was able to do that, I think that is so dope when we can just come and put other people on. I really hope that this show gets greenlit. I hope that it gets the viewership. I would definitely be watching it. I don't care. My big age. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of good news out of all of it is that, you know, maybe this could start a trend of more because I guess it's not just we don't need one we need me to make up for lost time I need to see it okay um because there's no reason there's no reason I mean Nickelodeon is another one we gotta but um that's a conversation for another day at least they had True Jackson at least they had that right like at least we got True Jackson BP even though it didn't get nearly as much love as the other people but it is what it is um, but yeah, that's kind of where it is. I just want better for dark-skinned girls, especially young ones, because black girlhood deserves to be seen on television. It's something that has been long neglected for far too long. And I think all shades of blackness needs to be shown, um, especially dark-skinned girls, because like I said, we are always left out of the conversation when it comes to representation, positive and effective, you know, that three-dimensional representation, I should put that in there, both on screen and off screen. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts, you know, let me know what do you think about, you know, the experiences of the black girls that I mentioned today. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll definitely see y'all in my next video. Peace out.